purpose. We're just going to sing a few songs together today. So uh, join in.
Pastor Brenna, First Apostolic Church of Aurora, and here we are on Sunday morning. Um, I have to admit, this is a little tough for me because uh, Sundays are such a treasured time at First Apostolic Church of Aurora where we all gather together. And typically at First Apostolic Church, we do not cancel services. Uh, everybody knows, especially on Sunday morning, uh, unless we just can't get to church, we have church. And I, as I look back over the last few years, probably uh, on uh, Sunday nights we've canceled some because of it being dark and windy and, and, and bitterly cold and heavy snowfall or 
there, but typically Sunday when it's daylight, if we can have it, we have it. But this is a whole new experience where it has been taken out of our hands and, and not just for this Sunday, but at least for the next Sunday or two, we are going to be having church from home. And as I mentioned uh, in our uh, Thursday night um, devotion, is we're gonna have to adapt to this changing time. And while I don't like it, uh, this is something that we're gonna adapt to and God's gonna be with us and it's gonna make us treasure all the more when we come back together on Sunday for the first time or our first scheduled services we're able to have uh, together. Um, as you know, the governor did mention that uh, they are shutting down the state through April the 7th. So obviously, as we had previously mentioned about going through April the 1st, uh, it looks like that will be extended a little bit longer as well. So we're just going to have to play things by ear, not knowing what's going to happen, but let's continue to pray uh, that the Lord helps us and brings us through this crisis where we can be back to, to norm and being together in the house of the Lord. Amen. Hope you've enjoyed the devotions that have been going forward. I'm so thankful for uh, Brother Wilhelm, for Rachel, uh, for Brother Caulfield and our student ministry team, for Sister Angela and some of the resources that she has gotten out. There is a lot of things in our day and time that uh, any other time did not have. If you go back to uh, generations ago before uh, the internet, before the web, uh, we find out that we are very blessed with technology because we're able to get together in ways that we never could before. So let's be thankful for that and let's, uh, let's uh, continue to worship together. And as you hear the singing, sing the songs. Uh, join in as you hear praying or as we are in the preaching. It's okay to say amen uh, at home on the living room couch, uh, even if it's just to wake up your spouse or sibling or, or brother or sister just to make sure that uh, they're awake, they're paying attention to the, the word of the Lord in our time together. Just a few announcements. First of all, just to remind you again, on Wednesday night, our midweek Bible study, we will have service at 7.30. We again ask you to join in prayer at 7 o'clock. Tomorrow night, Monday night, uh, Brother Coffee will have a lesson at 7.30, and uh, he will be getting contact with you uh, through um, the different apps to make sure you're aware of that and prepared for that. Also, uh, we'll continue with the prayer request. A lot of needs that are out there. Uh, please continue to pray for, for all of these needs, for our brothers and sisters, that the Lord would continue to move uh, in their lives. And uh, we just want our family to come together uh, healthy through this. Again, go to the prayer wall at our website. Check that out and, and uh, pray for the request there. As you receive your 5 o'clock prayer update, please make sure to um, uh, say a prayer for those needs as, as well. You can continue to give through uh, the website, facaurora.org. There's a, a giving tab as well as through the Breeze app if you have that on your phone or you log into that with your information. So today, uh, I, I've been thinking about the last few days, and, and I want us to uh, really start together in prayer as we consider uh, just what's happened over the last few days, what's taken place in our nation and our world. Uh, we have a lot of brothers and sisters who are sick at the church, and uh, I'm, I've been under the weather myself and dealing with the temperature, some things, and, and it seems like that's very prevalent right now. Uh, and so as we go, before we go into the word of the Lord, let's just all join together in prayer together corporately. I know we just got out of prayer uh, from our 9.30 to 10 o'clock uh, time period, but let's join together one more time before we go into the word of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for uh, the First Apostolic Church of Aurora family, and that we can come together, even if we're not in the same building, Lord, we can connect together uh, through digital means. Lord, we pray for all of our brothers and sisters who are sick, and that you bring healing and strength to them. We pray for those that are feeling the effects of this pandemic, whether it is socially, emotionally, economically, whatever might be impacting. We pray that you would touch and minister and uh, that you would uh, bring provision, healing, strength, and hope. God, we pray for our leaders of our nation and our, our health care providers, our first responders, our scientists, everyone that is battling uh, this pandemic. Lord, we pray that you'd give them wisdom and insight, Lord, that they would do a, a great work uh, in helping us to overcome this pandemic. Lord, we ask that you'd be with us. Help us to remain strong during this time to honor you and to impact people, that when they write the history of this day, 
Amen. They will say that we, we were faithful to our mission uh, in our love for you and our love for others. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, over the past few days, I've been thinking about our current state and uh, state of affairs, how something like this can happen. It seems surreal, almost a work of science fiction that that a virus like this could shut down the world in the in the 21st century, and uh, and then the questions: How long will this disrupt our, our daily lives, and how many people contract the virus? What what uh, effect will the virus have on those closest to us? Uh, I think just as a, a, a person, I think of my family, I think of my parents. I have uh, elderly parents who are in the age bracket that they are most vulnerable, and so. I worry and, and concern for them and pray for them. Um, I, I think about our church, how are uh, all the members of First Apostolic Church doing? As I mentioned er, uh, earlier, uh, several who have experienced sickness, some severe sickness. And uh, as I testified myself, I, I had just uh, the last few days 104 temperature and, and uh, still trying to uh, uh, overcome some of this. And, and so, uh, if some of this sermon does not make sense, uh, it might not be like my other sermons that don't make sense. It could be because I'm just a little bit under the weather. Um, uh, so, so what about that? What about our, our district? I think about our Illinois district and our fellow brothers and sisters throughout the state of Illinois and our young people as we've canceled uh, youth convention where they gather together and, and even receiving daily questions about youth camps, concerns that uh, being able to, to gather and worship to, to go together up. Uh, uh, I think about the Urshan system uh, as president of Urshan College and Urshan Graduate School of Theology. We have students really all across the nation, some in the hottest zones where this virus is. And so a lot of these things, just um, uh, questions, uh, have been uh, on my mind and considering them. And, and uh, we all have a lot more questions than we do answers. As information is shared on a daily basis, it sort of reinforces to me how little we know. Uh, because it seems like things are changing daily. And I do want to say, not only praying for, I'm thankful for our government officials and our scientists, our healthcare professionals, our first responders, all of those, our truckers, and anybody that during this time is doing their best to keep, uh, to service and to, to work on behalf of, of the American public. I, I'm just very thankful for all of them, and, and we need to pray, or, and pray for them and be thankful for them. And it's encouraging to see our nation uh, gather together behind a shared vision of, of uh, overcoming uh, COVID-19 and this war against it. Yet, how can we process this time throughout history? You know, we often use metaphors and analogies to make a sense of deeper, more abstract realities. The, the scripture does this when it talks about the kingdom of God. It'll say the kingdom of God is like, and it's talking about this uh this spiritual kingdom, and yet it uses metaphors to describe what it's like. The Bible says a man who sowed good seed. Uh, another place that says the kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. Uh, it's like leaven. It's like treasure hidden in the field. It's like a pearl of great price. It's like a king who made a marriage feast for a son. It's like a man traveling into a far country who delivered his goods into the hands of his servants. And uh, so this is how the scripture teaches about uh, spiritual, invisible things. It uses the metaphor of uh, real things that we can see, the, the tangible things. And so typically when I try to process things of, uh, of the Spirit, I do the similar, I, I do the very same thing. I try to consider what, how, how do I describe it? How do I think about it? And in considering our current state of affairs, I, I've struggled thinking, you know, reflecting on historical mile markers of the past and different eras throughout uh, the biblical text, uh, what is the best metaphor, what is the best picture to describe where we're at? And as I've been doing that over the last few days, I keep coming back to the setting of the wilderness in Scripture, just the wilderness. Throughout the biblical text, there are various narratives that are located in the wilderness. For example, Moses is in the backside of the desert for 40 years before the Lord calls him to return to Egypt and lead his people out. Israel would wander in the wilderness for 40 years before they would ever enter into the promised land. And Jesus would be tempted for 40 days and 40 nights in the wilderness uh, before launching his, his ministry. And so I, there are these times throughout the scripture where the wilderness is very prevalent. And yet in each of these cases, you, you notice some similar characteristics. 
prior to their journey into the wilderness, each had experienced miraculous things. Uh, for instance, Moses, before he went to the backside of the desert, he had, he had been rescued and adopted by Pharaoh's daughter. He had witnessed, um, he had witnessed the power of God in providing for him and sustaining him and keeping him. Israel, uh, um, before they went into the wilderness, they were delivered from Egyptian bondage. They had experienced the Passover where the death angel passed over them and, and the Lord dividing the sea where they could walk through on a dry seabed. They had experienced that and that's uh, before they ever entered into the wilderness. Jesus, talk about miracles. Uh, he was the God-man born of a virgin as the Holy Spirit overshadowed Mary. Uh, the miraculous intervention of God into flesh, into history, uh, God with us. So everyone, Moses, Israel, Jesus, before they went to the wilderness, they experienced uh, just dynamic, uh, supernatural activity in their life. And then following their wilderness experience, they would enter into periods of amazing blessing and favor of, of God. For instance, Moses, uh, after his wilderness uh, journey, uh, Forty, you know, his, his years in, in the desert. The uh, the rod that was in his hand would instead of the rod of Moses, it would become the rod of God, and it could turn from a serpent back to a staff. Moses could see his hand uh, become leprous just by putting it in its, his cloak and bringing it out. It was after the uh, the time in the desert that Moses would uh, represent God, and they would be victorious over the ten plagues, all of the gods of Egypt, and. And Moses would deliver his family from Egyptian bondage after his time in the desert. Israel, after their time in the wilderness, they would enter into the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. They would enter and possess homes that they did not build. And they would uh, eat from vineyards they didn't plant. And they would draw from wells that they did not dig. All this took place after their time in the vineyard. And then uh, Jesus. Uh, a dynamic and powerful ministry would take place after he had spent his time in the wilderness. Uh, Luke 7 says this, Jesus answered and said to them, Go and tell John the things you have seen and heard, that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, the poor have the gospel preached to them. That's Luke 7, 22. This is all after his time in the wilderness. It is a dynamic, powerful um, ministry that takes place. And eventually, of course, uh, the greatest overcoming of all, the gospel, that he would overcome death, hell, and, and the grave. And so what, what, what I want to draw your attention to is in all of these cases, before the wilderness, they experienced the supernatural power of God and uh, divine intervention. After the wilderness, uh, they, they experienced uh, the promises of God and, and great things occurred. And between those two bookends is the wilderness. And so today, I want to talk to you about navigating the wilderness um, and, and using that maybe over the next times while I'm speaking as sort of a metaphor of where we're at, that we have entered into a period of wilderness, um, that we've seen God do great things in the past, like we'll talk about in a bit, and we believe God has got great favor and things in the future. But between those, there are times where we go into the wilderness that uh, between mountains, there are valleys that we walk through. And so this is a valley, but we want to keep walking through this valley because there's a mountain on the other side and to continue on this journey. If I could have one of the ushers get me um, uh, something to drink, that would be great. Uh, I, I apologize. Our ushering staff has really uh, fallen down on us um, this Sunday. And I hate to do this and publicly uh, with our ushers, but it just happens to be that um, I'm very dry with uh, some of the medicine and some of the things that are going on in my my body. So that, that, that's milk. So we'll address this in our next staff meeting with our ushers. Uh, so today I wanted to st start talking about navigating the wilderness. Uh, during 2020, we have been talking about Thank you. Thank you. I'm glad the, the prettiest usher that we have at First Apostolic Church happens to be on, on staff today. Today I want to start uh, talking about navigating the wilderness. During 2020, we've been talking about... Thank you. 
uh, an ar overarching background vision for the next few years from the writings of Ezekiel where God says, can these bones live? And in particular, we've talked about the Fox Valley. Can the bones of this Fox Valley live? And we believe they can live. And not only that, that it's God's desire that the bones throughout the Fox Valley be assembled into a mighty army. We started talking about the first of the year, how over the next uh, years that we believe God wants to, FAC Aurora to experience a spiritual awakening and empowerment that will lead to deep spiritual uh, formation as individual lives, marriages, and families are transformed and developed into models of Christ in the church. So this is what we are believing on and, and we are working toward. And our vision and theme for this year is to begin by putting the first bones together, which are our bones. And so we began uh, the theme for this year with, the, with it being, let it start with me. And so that's sort of been our vision, our theme. We, we want a mighty army, an apostolic army, in this Fox Valley area. And we believe that God wants to bring bones together and, uh, and sinew and muscle and flesh and blood and create a mighty apostolic army. And then we believe, first of all, this year it starts with us. We need to be healthy and strong in, in the, the warriors that God would have us to be. And so that's what our, our theme has been. Yet today we are experiencing things that, that I did not see in November or December when we were thinking about this year or the next few years. I, I, I didn't see it. I didn't plan for it. And it is critical that it still starts with me. But part of our spiritual awakening and formation over the next few weeks will be about navigating the wilderness. And I think there are lessons that we can learn from the wilderness that will prepare us to receive the promises that God has for us. Yet even, even though we're in a wilderness, my vision of the promised land has not wavered. Uh, church family, I, I believe that God has so many great things in store for us that even though we are experiencing this setback right now, uh, that if we will let it start with us, we can come through this and being stronger, having greater faith in God, more devoted in our prayer and our worship and our families than, than we were going into this. That, that God can take uh, this bad thing that is happening in our world and he can work good things in our lives and the lives of our family. And so I'm looking forward to that promised land and I'm not going to uh, lie to me, the promised land right now, I know there's so many way people have used uh, the promised land as a metaphor for so many things. Uh, for me right now, it looks like us all being together on a Sunday again at First Apostolic Church where we all gather the whole body and we can sing and, and uh, the word and worship and fellowship. I, I'm just looking forward to, to that day. Uh, and so that, that's sort of what I'm looking forward to coming through this wilderness season for. But today, I, to begin speaking about navigating the wilderness, let me start by reminding us that first of all, just like Moses, just like Israel, just like uh, the life of Jesus, uh, that, that we were blessed and highly favored of the Lord before we ever entered in the wilderness. Uh, no doubt when Israel left uh, bondage in Egypt, the only thing they could think about was freedom and deliverance and relief and, and uh, think maybe that all of their problems were over. Uh, how long had they laid on their bed at night and, and just dreamt about life without a taskmaster and life without how, someone beating them and, and putting them to, torturing them to accomplish somebody else's dream and vision? How long did they sing songs and dream about a day of, of deliverance and, 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 and rescue that would take place in their life? And what was it like that day that God delivered them, sending Moses uh, to walk them out and exercising power over the gods of Egypt? Exodus 15 says it like this, verse 19. For the horses of Pharaoh went with his chariots and his horsemen into the sea. The Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the children of Israel went on dry land in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took the timbrel in her hand, and all the women went out after her with timbrels and with dances. Miriam answered them, Sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and its rider he has thrown into the sea. Uh, you, you see the celebration that's taking place, the music, the dancing, the temporal. They, they finally had what they were looking for. This is an amazing thing that God has done. Then Exodus 15, 22, the next verse says it like this. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea. Then they went into the wilderness of Shur, and they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. So they've experienced an incredible thing, deliverance. Uh, they're brought out, but three days later, they're in a wilderness, and they have nothing to drink. And so there's a shift that takes place. And they discovered uh, that 
they had to have a new relationship with Jehovah. Not only could he be their deliverer and their savior, but now they were going to have to learn he was going to have to be their provider and their sustainer. And so Exodus 16, 4 and 5, the Lord God said to, to Moses, Behold, I will rain bread from heaven for them. And the people will go out and gather a certain quota every day that I may test them, whether they will walk in my law or not. It shall be on the sixth day they shall prepare what they bring in. It shall be twice as much as they gather daily. So here's what happens is that when Israel is in the wilderness and finding out, coming to the realization, no, there's still going to be problems, there's still going to be troubles, there's still going to be things they have to uh, address in their life. But yet God was showing them that just like I brought you out of Egypt, I can sustain you through the wilderness. And this is going to be a time of testing. You're going to have to trust in me, uh, the same God that brought you out, to be faithful to him and to, to uh, continue to be steadfast with him. We, uh, Paul would say it like this, that, that when the Lord brought them out through the sea and the cloud and the sea, it was a type of baptism and, and the spirit. The, it, it was a, a type of being born again. And here we are as members of First Apostolic Church. We know what it's like for God to do a miraculous work in our life. We know what it's like for God to save us, to fill us with his spirit, to bless us, uh, to bring us out. Uh, I think about the wonderful members of First Apostolic Church and it's overwhelming when you start looking back through the years and seeing how good God has been. Someone needs to say a praise the Lord right there and a thank you, Jesus. Because if it had not been for the Lord, uh, many, many of the people that I'm talking to right now, marriages would have dissolved and, and, and some would not be alive today because God has truly, truly been good to us. And we cannot forget that when we are in the wilderness. We can't forget it. So we need to be thankful. I, I know that there are times where we wrestle with fears and doubts. That's a normal part of this process. But, but we need to be thankful and have gratitude during this time as well because God has been good to us. He has been with us. And uh, we are blessed and highly favored of the Lord. And so every day, uh, I, I know we're going to cast our cares on the Lord. And I know we're going to take our concerns with Him. And I know we're going to pray about our concerns, just like I'm praying for you and, and uh, family members and, and friends and loved ones and other needs that I'm aware about, aware of. But at the same time, we need to make sure we enter into his courts, gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. We need to be thankful for what the Lord has already done. And so the challenge was to continue trusting and remaining faithful to the God who had already proven himself and delivered. God doesn't have to prove himself to us now. He's already done that. Our responsibility is to remain faithful to him and trust him and take him at his word even while we're in the wilderness. And that's what the Lord said was going to happen, that they would get hungry and thirsty. Where the Lord could test them, are you still going to follow my word? Uh, Exodus 16, 14 through 21 lets us know that a layer of dew lifted and on the surface of the wilderness was a small round substance as fine as the frost of the ground. When the children of Israel saw it, they said to one another, what is it? For they did not know what it was. And Moses said to them, This is the bread which the Lord has given you to eat. This is the thing which the Lord has commanded. Let every man gather according to each one's need, one omer for each person, according to the number of persons. Let every man take for those who are in his tent. Then the children of Israel did so, and they gathered some, gathered some more, some less. So when they measured it out by omers, he who had gathered much had nothing left over, and he who had gathered little had no lack. Every man had gathered according to each one's needs. Now notice, he, he talks about the, the layer of dew lifting, and there was a small, round substance uh, that was on the ground. And, and they call it manna. I tend to call it Oreos, uh, small, round substance. In fact, I, I've got to tell you, um, my wife has convinced me to give up my, my typical yearly resolution is no Oreos until the month of December. But uh, because of these extraordinary times, I have decided to go with the Oreos uh, one a day until we are back in church. And so I have had three thus far. We'll have uh, or four thus far. We'll have one tonight. And uh, it is a nightly tradition. So I'm believing that the Lord has to bring us out of this before I run out of Oreos. And, uh, just, just joking, but I am eating the Oreos. Uh, and so he brought manna. He brings water out of a rock and demonstrates uh, that he's going to provide for them. And notice, every person did not, did not lack. 
their needs were met wherever they were at, whatever their need was. The, the challenge was for them to trust God in the wilderness. The challenge was that the God that delivered them and was going to take them to the promised land, that before the promised land, they had to trust him in, in the wilderness uh, where they could, could see that. And so today, as we talk about the wilderness experience, and as I, I start to wrap up uh, my message for, for today, what, what I'm feeling in my spirit is that we have had amazing things take place from uh, in the past, the blessings of the Lord, our church history, personal history. And I, I would encourage you to, to talk about the good things that God has done. Um, when we sit down at the table, yes, let's talk about the news, let maybe keep updated, know what's happening in the world, I understand that. Uh, every day I'm wanting to find out how has this spread more, you know, what, what's the most recent update, and, and we need to keep informed of that. But there is a danger of just focusing on, on a pandemic and a virus and not focusing on the God of the universe, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I want to challenge you to reflect back on all that God has done before this wilderness, all the blessings all his provision, all his goodness, the goodness of the body, the fellowship. In fact, as I, uh, as I thought back over this last week and, and even seen uh, some of the uh, posts on Facebook and of the families of the church, you, you really have a longing for your brothers and sisters and so many fond memories of being together at a, a picnic or a fellowship, um, worshiping together. We have so much to be thankful for. So reflect on those times. Don't forget about the promised land that is coming or the future. God has great things in store for Aurora, Illinois. The prophecies that have been given and the words that have gone forth, these are not going to fall to the ground. Uh, God is a God of his word. They will come to pass. And uh, we have blessings and favor and, and wonderful things that are in store on the other side of the wilderness. And so those are the bookends. But right now, in this time of wilderness, we need to realize where we're at and realize God has not lost any of his power and the, the same God that delivered us and saved us will sustain us and will keep us and will provide for us as we go through this wilderness journey. So I want to encourage you to put that confidence in, in him and that faith in him and believe that God, just like you supplied them in their wilderness with manna and water, that uh, you would give them as they had need of and you would supply all of their needs, that you're going to do the same for us today. And when we come out on the other side and we enter to our promised land, we're going to look back and be so thankful that a God kept us all the way. If you look back at Israel, not only did God supply them with food and water, he took care of their clothing, he protected them, he guarded them. Uh, he was just there all the time. And I love that song. You know, he was there all the time, older song that we probably haven't seen, uh, sung in quite some time. But the truth of that, he was there all the time. And he is going to be with us. He's going to walk with us through the valley, through the wilderness. He's going to lead us. He's going to guide us. And if we will trust in him and follow him, he will bring us out on the other side. And so I just want to tell you, I love you. I'm thankful for you. Uh, I'm thankful for uh, this family, and I'm thankful that we're going to persevere through this time, and uh, God's going to bring us through on the other side. Don't forget, tomorrow, Monday night, uh, the break point, we'll be having youth lesson with Brother Caulfield, 730, so that's going to be a great time. And then we will have devotions going up. I believe Brother Wilhelm is Monday night, and you'll be able to hear from him. And uh, then, of course, Tuesday night, Wednesday, as we're going forward. Make sure to prayer, pray for your brothers and sisters with the prayer list. And uh, let's continue to keep our spirits up, continue to have uh, an attitude of gratitude, and look forward to what God is going to do through us and how he's going to develop us and how we are going to be transformed and come through this stronger and more equipped to fulfill his mission in our lives. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We look forward to talking to you next time. Oh, my God.